Hey, nice to finally meet you and uh, I've heard so many good things about you. Your performance report has been splendid uh, and your manager also has a lot of good things to say about you. I was just wondering why have you set up this one-on-one -on -one meeting with me? Yeah, hi, thank you so much and thanks for accepting this one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, as you said, my performance has been really good. So I was wondering if I could get promoted this cycle. Oof, promotion. Well, you know, the thing is that it will be very hard to make your case for promotion because you've been here for what, one year? But when I joined this startup, you know, I was told that it's all about my metrics. So if it is there, then why does tenure matter so much, right? I mean, that's true. It is always metric based, but tenure is always implied uh, because everybody here has been promoted at least after two years. So you're saying that doesn't matter how good I perform, I am not going to get promoted before two years. So why would I be motivated to just keep performing more and more? That's a, that's a good question. So what is your answer to that question? Your answer is that is a good question. Hmm. Got to say. It's a good question. Hello everyone, this is Josh and I'm a data engineer at Google. And the worst thing that's happening right now is the layoffs. It's happening everywhere around the world and across all job profiles. And it kind of sucks because it leaves you in a lot of anxiety that even if you're not laid off, what if you do get laid off somewhere down the line? But if you focus on the positives and look at all the job openings right now, you will find that a lot of them has the word data engineer or data analyst or data scientist in it. Is it a good time to be in a data domain right now? Relatively, yes, because we have seen the rise of AI with ChatGPT and BARD and all of these AIs and all of these AI related developments, they need a team of data specific folks, be it data engineers or data analysts or data scientists. But what does the normal career progression look like? This is something that I've never addressed in detail on this channel. So this is what I'm going to do right now. And uh, this video is simply going to be divided into three different components. One, how does the career progression look like in consulting firms? How does it look like in product firms? What are different options? And what are the horizontal uh, options that you can switch if you are, let's say, tired of being a data engineer, now you want to be a data scientist or data architect, what are the options somewhere for you down the line? But before we get started, do leave a like to this video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And once you've done all that, let's jump right in. Okay, so the reason that I'm having two different parts, one for consulting and one for product, is that it really is different how your career progression looks like in either of them. And the reason that I know that is because I've worked with both of them. One thing that I don't really like to involve myself in the deep is the debate between consulting firms and the product firms because I don't really think it makes sense. I don't really think that one is superior. It's just that you have different type of role in both of them. And depending on your likes, your personality or your vision, uh, of where do you see yourself in the future, you can like either of them. So I'm just going to get started with the consulting example for now. So it starts with data engineer or analyst or a data scientist, kind of equates to an associate level role in consulting firms. When you are at an associate level who is just starting out, 100% of the work involves implementation and analysis. So essentially you are responsible for building things. Now, depending on how many people are there in your project, you might be involved in creating, let's say, an entire data pipeline from start to end, or you might just be involved in a one particular component, let's say data ingestion of a pipeline. Uh, but essentially, you will be responsible for implementation and building. You'll have to take care of the quality of the deliverables that you produce as well. Next is senior engineer or associate, where 70% of the task falls into implementation and 30% is into design and mentoring. So design really means the high level and the low level design that you would create for your subordinates because now you would have some associates with you. Now you're since you're a senior engineer and you have to make sure that not only your quality of deliverables is maintained but also their quality is maintained. So you have to do a lot of mentoring as well. But 70% of the work still um, is falling into the implementation side on your own. 
after that you can become a specialist or a senior consultant now these job titles might differ from company to company for example uh, a senior consultant in deloitte is equal to a consultant in zs but more or less they fall into the similar category and some companies also like, like to name it like specialist if it's a more tech oriented profile but the but this role essentially is responsible for 50 percent of sales or management and 50 percent of implementation when i say sales it means that you're involved in pre-sales activities like let's say giving a demo to your client and finally making sure that you land the project uh, compared to your competitors and then you get started with the project you're also responsible for managing your team because now you have some senior engineers and associates with you so you have to kind of take care of the day-to-day -day task activities and also you are still 50 percent responsible for implementation but now you have officially switched from uh, a coder or an engineer to a person who is selling things managing people and focusing more on ppt compared to coding the next level is manager or architect so here the person is obviously responsible for sales managing and creating high level architecture etc now as a manager you need to kind of create your own portfolio that's you know let's say you have five clients and they are billing uh, 20 million per year and that will essentially give you good visibility in your firm that's how directly responsible you are for sales apart from that you also have to take care of high level architecture that what components should you use in your data pipeline and finally convince your client to do the same as well so see how the role has been evolving from a data engineer to kind of an architect who is involved in selling projects the final level is director or principal or partner i don't think that there is a lot of difference between a partner and a principal but between a partner and a director there is a lot of difference so if you're a partner you get some percentage of the profit sharing of the entire company and that's a lot of money like for example if your salary per year is about 1 million dollar which is not even exaggerating that's the salaries that they do give at this level but let's say if your salary is 1 million dollar and i'm pretty sure that three hundred thousand dollars or around that range would be your fixed but you might get around five hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars as profit that's the pro of becoming a partner but the con with that is you're responsible for bringing in projects if you don't bring, bring enough projects then your overall profit might go down and then you might get paid less compared to that if you're a director you're basically the highest paid employee of a company that means your base might be higher than a partner that instead of 300,000, you might be earning $450,000, but you don't get the profit sharing. Yes, you get the normal performance bonus. So if you compare with a high performing partner versus a high performing director, a partner usually earns more. And both of them are kind of responsible for sales and big picture stuff uh, who are responsible for making a vision for their own team, hiring different folks to come fulfill their vision and make sure that they're going in that direction. Mentioned in this slide is that the lower you are on the level, you are closer to the implementation and coding and higher you go, you are closer to the PPTs and sales. So that's about consulting. Now let's go to product company. Now in product companies, you have two different tracks. One is IC, which is known as individual contributor. And another one is management track in which you can become a manager. Now, if you remember in consulting companies, you did not really have that option because ultimately you will become like a manager or an architect and get promoted to director or principal. But in product companies, if you still want to, you know, ground your roots into coding, you can do that by staying into the individual contributor track. Even your highest position will still be called an engineer and you are relatively much more closer to the technology than people. So it starts with the normal uh, engineer position and then you can become a senior engineer, staff engineer, principal engineer and distinguished engineer. Now these levels are just for example, some companies might have more or less levels compared to this. For example, you might have a level called uh, senior staff engineer after staff engineer before getting promoted to principal engineer. So all of this is going to be there differently for different companies, but more or less the concept remains the same. But here throughout your career progression cycle, you're closer to the technology, but that does not really mean that you're not responsible for leading your team. But most of the cases, if you are a staff engineer, you're responsible for leading your own team 
for a prolonged amount of time compared to that if you compare it with a manager you are kind of responsible for leading more number of teams and more number of people. As a staff engineer your role becomes also more technical where you help your people technically to achieve the things that you have a vision to achieve for. Uh, let's say by giving them a high level low level design or even helping them with implementation at times now i know this is a little bit confusing but even if you are in an ic track you do need leadership qualities because you might have team that you will manage and then uh, if you look at the manager side and then you can be an engineering manager director of engineering and vp of engineering they're responsible for big picture stuff let's say if there's a vp of AWS or VP of Azure or Google Cloud, they are responsible to make sure that the product entire Google Cloud or entire AWS etc is heading into the right direction. That's not really the responsibility of a distinguished engineer whose scope is more narrower but goes into more depth technically. There are so many companies out there, there are also startups as well who follow the unconventional career progression path but more or less uh, even if your job title isn't exactly the same conceptually you would fall into one of these uh, different levels that I'm mentioning. Now let's talk about horizontal options of switching if you're a data engineer. I'm going to keep myself limited right now for the data domain because unless the chart will just be too expensive for me to show. So let's say if you're a data engineer and you decide to move you can obviously be a data scientist which is a pretty common option that a lot of engineers take because to get into data scientist you kind of need a PhD degree or at least a master's in data scientist if you want to get into it right from the start. But if you let's say have not done that, people usually start out that career with data engineers which does not have that much of hard requirement of higher degrees and then after two or three years of experience they can pivot into becoming a data scientist. Another option is obviously you can take like an engineering manager kind of a role. Another option is customer data engineer. Now as I said, in a consulting firm, you kind of have to be a customer data engineer at some point because you will be involved in pre-sales as you grow in your career. But in product firms, you have a separate track for that. So even if you are somebody who is just a fresher, you can be involved in pre-sales if you are a customer data engineer. There is also a different track called data architect. Now, data architects are more responsible for creating the system design, I would say, of the data pipeline rather than implementing it. And that's about it. I guess that was a lot of information. I hope you find it useful. Are you already inside this career progression track and some levels above than the starting position? Or are you just starting out and figuring out what, which is the right one for you? Well, let's talk about it in the comment section below. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Also, as I said, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. That's it from my side. See you guys next time.